There are some common traits and behaviors of players that are new to Dead by Daylight. Some of these aren't necessarily terrible things, but they absolutely scupper the chances of your team escaping. So if you're an experienced player, here's some relatable content that we can laugh at together. And if you're inexperienced, here are some things you may be doing that you really ought to cut out. Running away to heal. I can understand the feeling of urgency when being unhooked or after escaping the killer and wanting to move away to a far corner of the map that you believe won't be being patrolled in order to heal. That much makes sense. In theory, you're vulnerable when healing, you're emitting a loud noise, and given how meta nurse's calling is in some builds, I totally get why new players do this. What I don't understand is why you'd waste the entire time it would have taken to heal in order to get into these positions. Or why you'd move from a safe position right next to a loop to the corner of the map where you're not hidden and doubly vulnerable. This shouldn't be a matter of an experience either, really. It should be clear that DBD is about time utilization and wasting any amount of time is a bad idea, but even more so that healing often takes less time than you've just spent running. I think we all did this. I certainly did, but it's time to stop and cut it out. Instead of running away immediately, think about the current state of the game. Can you hear a heartbeat? Are there any pallets nearby? Has someone else just gone from healthy to injured, indicating that they're currently being chased? The killer is unlikely to leave the person they're chasing to go after you after getting unhooked. Remember too that running leaves scratch marks and these are most easily visible on walls. So if you're in the corner of the map, right by the map's wall, you're more than likely going to be spotted. Being a blendette. This isn't limited to being a blendette really, but generally is about immersed gamers. The purpose of chasing in DBD is to waste the killer's time. While they're chasing you, your teammates can work on gens. Now I totally understand if you're bad at chases and think, oh, hide as soon as I hear the terror radius because any given chase against me will last seconds. But if that's how you get into the habit of playing, you're going to find it harder to learn chasing as you rank up and face off against better skilled players. There are times in DVD to play stealthily as a survivor, but it isn't the way you should be treating every single match. And if you are, then you're contributing considerably less to your team than you think you are by sticking to the generator after hiding. As I said, it might stop being a new video. The more you chase, the more you make mistakes and die because of it, the better you're going to get at the game. You aren't going to get anywhere by hiding away and playing stealthily. It's also extremely boring for both yourself and the killer. Unhooking right in front of the killer. If you unhook a survivor and they go down immediately after, you're going to get punished by the emblem system. Sure, you get some BP for the unhook, but not only have you screwed over your pal, but you've also screwed over yourself and probably won't be pipping. Sometimes you absolutely have to unhook right there and then, and I totally get how for newer players, seizing that opportunity at all feels more important than seizing at the right time, but trust me, wait until it's safe. If it's not safe, then run away from the hook to give another teammate the chance to get the unhook safely. This is a team game. It isn't about who unhooks, but that the player gets unhooked at all. That's why all players are rewarded come emblem time for safe unhooks. I'm literally releasing a video today, hopefully, where I say don't farm, and then I literally go and farm in a video. Attempting to escape. This isn't really something that happens more than once, so I won't spend too much time on it. This isn't really communicated very well in game either, but barring any luck add-ons or perks, you only have a 4% chance of escaping from the hook by yourself, and if you try it and fail, then your hook timer is reduced by 20 seconds. Each hook phase takes 60 seconds, so you're really, really cutting your time short by doing this. Now, of course, it's all situational, but in my mind, the only time when you should attempt to escape from the hook yourself, disregarding perks like deliverance or luck offerings, is when you really have no other option. Every player is downed and an unhook is the only way of pulling the game back or your teammates aren't making any clear attempts to save you. Not looking behind in chases. The number one thing you can do right now, easily actionable to make yourself 10 times better at Dead by Daylight is to learn to look behind you during chases. Oh, yep. I didn't realize, oh, he's got bamboozle, okay. Light time. Of course, you'll need to look where you're going to plan your route and ensure you don't run into anything, but intel on where the killer is and how far away from you they are is just as invaluable. You simply won't get to rank one without learning to constantly look behind yourself for where the killer is. It's such an essential part of the game that DBD Mobile has a dedicated button for it. If you aren't looking behind, you can't know how far the killer is to plan when to throw down pallets, nor whether you should be immediately jumping on a nearby loop or using the additional distance to find somewhere safer or that will be less pivotal towards the end of the game. <laughs> it's not fair! Using self-care.
So there are some things that noobs do in Dead by Daylight. Is there anything that I missed? Any particular behaviors that you think noobs do that could be addressed easily in a couple of sentences, telling them why they're wrong and what they should do instead? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I don't have a Q&A question this week as I'm all out of them as far as I'm aware. I'll chuck a new community post up tomorrow to source some more. Sorry, nothing in this video. So the names on screen right now, I'd like to thank my patrons, Pigeon Toast and Spike Yo Pro, as well as Jen Rush's Club and millions of the entity members, Lewis Hernan, Aaron Hutchie, Merciless Cheeseburger, Santi Gamer, Spike Yo Pro, Alia E, and Joshua Daney. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in... Guess what? Guess when I'll see you? Oh, the next one! Ah! Uh. Alright, I'm gonna save him. Ha <laughs> ha!